Let's talk about battery metals. I've seen some of your videos. I don't think you're a fan. Well, I think that's right. And uh, tell me why. You know, I did a, tell me uh, why. I did a piece uh, a week or so ago called uh, Why Battery Metals Have Lost Their Charge. Markets that have spikes to the upside that go exponential will go parabolic. And a parabola is, is uh, it looks like this. And so when things go up, they will go down. And that's what's happened. All the battery metals over the course of the last year and a half. Um, cobalt's lost 70% of its value. Yeah. Lithium's lost nearly 50% of its value. Vanadium has lost 75% of its value in terms of prices. So oh, um, there is very strong supply to demand fundamentals for all those moves. But I think, you know, your premise is that these are very small volumes and therefore, yep. and because of that, there's no futures or options markets. I think you've, you've talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't take much to be able to, you know, change the fortunes of, of those commodities. Um, that's, that's correct. And, you know, and, and I think each one of them has, you know, everyone was very excited about cobalt two years ago, um, lithium, year and a half ago um and vanadium obviously anyone who's got vanadium is quick. Uh, yeah it was real quick and then and then and vanadium anyone who's got a vanadium project is pushing the um the uh, vanadium redox flow battery story at you right I I'm, 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 I'm i'm sensing from the eye roll that the vanadium redox flow battery is is not something that you see as a, a, a meaningful solution and it's probably a, a side story at best Absolutely. Uh, you know, vanadium is all about steel, alloys for steel. And this latest vanadium run up, which uh, peaked in December, um, was, uh, and it started just a few months below, before that, was all about uh, China, the Chinese requiring more vanadium in the rebar because they've been making substandard rebar. Rebar for the uninitiated is essentially used to stabilize structures, especially concrete structures against earthquake hazards. So you put, and if the, the rebar that goes in the middle of the concrete pour uh, uh, breaks because it doesn't have, the steel doesn't have enough vanadium in it, uh, then it defeats the purpose. So uh, the Chinese established new vanadium standards for for rebar which increased the demand for vanadium which increased the speculation in the market price went to 34 dollars a kilogram and and now it's back down to about eight bucks a kilogram and that's happened over a period of uh of about eight eight months so um the vanadium redox battery best storage arguably the best storage batteries that we have now uh, but they are only good for commercial scale uh, storage facilities football field size storage there the footprint is huge for net vanadium redox batteries they have no application at all in small batteries or even electric vehicle batteries so a uh, very small part of the market it's it will increase the demand for vanadium, but look at it this way: you got all these vanadium uh, explorers, developers all over, all over creation, all over the world, and uh, people don't realize that all the vanadium is supplied as a byproduct, or nearly all of it. There are only three standalone vanadium mines in the world. There, there was four a year ago; one shut down and south now there's only three but most of vanadium comes from steel slag uh, uh, so it's reprocessed recycled uh, byproduct of uranium mining uh, so one of uh, the uh, u.s uranium developers uh, is uh, energy fuels they uh, they increase their vanadium uh, production uh, and as a byproduct of uh, of past uranium mining. Also, uh, uh, fly ash from coal uh, powered power plants recover vanadium. And, and 
uh, oil residues from petroleum cracking. So when the price of vanadium uh, went up, what did Shell and Exxon do? Did they they tweaked it through a few things in their refineries and started producing more vanadium. So you know the cure for high prices is high prices, and we saw that in the vanadium. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. So what do you think that's going to do for juniors who have vanadium component to this? Uh, and they're putting a value in it, or they believe there's a, there's a valuation being attributed to the vanadium. Is that a good thing for juniors? No, I, you know, I don't touch uh, juniors uh, in those specialty metals, none of which uh, uh, we've mentioned so far. Uh, I don't play in those games. Uh, specialty metals are small markets. They're easily manipulated. Once prices go up, alternative supplies come in. Uh, and and no, no better illustrated than vanadium, but also same thing happened to cobalt over the last year and a half. Um, so I am of the strong opinion that uh, we will not see any new vanade, standalone vanadium mines in the world over the next five years. I, I see nothing on the horizon. Well, I hear, um, I hear you on that. But what, what about vanadium as a secondary product? There's a lot of uranium companies that we've spoken to. We have, have uranium as a secondary. And, so and it, most, of that, most of that comes out of the Yerevan district in Utah and Colorado. Uh, and most of that is con most of those projects are are controlled by energy fuels. Energy fuels have the only uranium mill in the United States, and they have deposits that that have grades of vanadium five times the uranium grade. So what happens when the vanadium price went up? They they said, oh well, we have this. Pregnant pond solutions been sitting over here for, for for a long, long time, and it's got four million pounds of, of vanadium in it. Let's turn on the vanadium circuit and run this through and produce vanadium. Well, vanadium. Let's talk about. And let's, that's let's... what happened. The price goes down, and what are they doing right now? They're stockpiling vanadium until the price goes up. So one just on finish off on battery metals. One thing, commodity we didn't talk about was nickel. Looking at mm -hmm. market analysis there, I think it's the expectation that nickel market is going to take off one of the few. But again, your warning would be for how long? Well, uh, so once again, nickel is uh, used overwhelmingly to make steel, uh, some for petroleum and chemical catalysts. Uh, but the battery component, number one, it requires a different end product than uh, than nickel and steel so uh, uh, nickel and um, and it is very very small portion of the market right now uh, nickel is used in nickel metal hydride batteries it can be used although not as efficiently uh, for substitute for cobalt and lithium ion batteries but it is a minuscule part of the market right now uh, 96% of nickel goes into some sort of steel product. About 4% is used in other applications uh, and including green glass and magnets and I forget a couple of the other ones. But the battery component of the other 4% is minuscule. And the most optimistic for, uh, predictions that I've seen for future nickel demand, and this would uh, uh, be the most optimistic uh, uh, projections for electric vehicles and battery use uh, might increase the nickel demand over a course of the next five to 10 years, accumulated three to 4%. So you don't play nickel as a battery metal, you play nickel uh, for Chinese demand for steel. Do you think anyone who's could have made money in battery uh, metals, equities, businesses have made their money? Or, or put it another way, can, can, can we make money investing in battery metals companies? Uh, I, 
that boat has left the port this time. But these things come back around, you know, 10 years ago, we had a spike in cobalt, took 10 years to, to have another one. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at a 25 year chart of vanadium, you see these parabolic spikes either three or four times. So yeah, these things come back, but when they come back again, make sure you pick the right companies uh, when the buzz starts and, and get out of them uh, when you, you know, take all your money off the table when, they, when the stocks double and then play the rest if you so desire. But, uh, but that's the way these specialty metals work over and over and over again. Okay. We've seen it. We've seen it in, here's an example. We're in rare earths. We're, we're in a little rare earth boom again. Uh, is it sustainable? Probably not. We saw a spike in prices. That's happened for the third time in the last 10 years. That's an interesting one, actually. So we, we recently interviewed a rare earths uh, company specialized in neodymium, which is mm -hmm. used uh, in the magnets, very strong magnets Absolutely. within yeah. within a battery manufacturer. So what you're saying is there's there's got to be a significant growth in the EV story, whether it be cars, buses, boats, planes, whatever, whatever home storage um, for companies like that to be able to succeed? Or do you think that there is a niche market for some of these rare earths companies? Uh, I would, I would be looking now for downstream rare earth, uh, not the mine, not the exploration and, and mining companies, but the downstream part of the rare earth business, uh, the ones that uh, have a feed stock. Uh, however, they get that. I would prefer they not be miners, but have a feed stock that they can source and have processing and most importantly, separation capabilities of separation technologies, new technologies are coming. Uh, for instance, North America, uh, we have plenty of rare earths. Uh, we have Molycorp producing again. The problem with Molycorp, it's called MP Materials now, it's a private company, is they don't have the, the, the separation capabilities, so they send their concentrates to China. So we need that sort of thing in North America. Separation capability, uh, uh, that is part of what Trump has done with rare says a, as a uh, uh, critical mineral is we need to develop the downstream capabilities. Uh, we used to have that. We sold all of our capabilities to the Chinese about 20 years ago, and it's come back to haunt us now. So uh, there are companies in rare space. Some of them are private. Some of them are public, but doing deals with private companies. So look at that at that magna capable separation magnet uh in product the servo motor sort of end of that uh i think there's opportunities there and, and just it's going to close that off so i understand so i get the downstream component but give me the reasons why you wouldn't invest in a rare earth miner well i'm not saying miners exactly well you have two choices right now outside of china you have linus who mines in Western Australia, processes in Malaysia. Uh, they have problems with political opposition uh, to the processing separation in Malaysia. Uh, and, and the other choice, well, it's not really a choice because it's a private company, that's MP Materials. Now, there are a couple of very small producers in other places in Africa, for example, uh, but I would be looking for companies that are in that middle to far downstream and, and not specifically the miners or the explorers, developers. We found all the, in the previous big boom from 2009 to 2012, arguably, uh, we found and explored and, and evaluated for economics all the known rare earth big rare discoveries in the world um, or known occurrences, new discoveries, 
uh, for the most part, those are sub-economic deposits because generally because of uh, infrastructure or, lo or grades that can't compete. Uh, you know, Molly Corp next to uh, China is the highest light rare deposit in the world. Uh, the two or three uh, most endowed heavy rare earth deposits in the world are in the far north of Canada with extreme infrastructure and uh, accessibility problems. So um, all the deposits we found, we got, we came away with no new mines. Well, uh, with the exception of a couple of very small things in Africa.